G'day senior golfers. Today's video is entitled Easiest Golf Swing for Seniors. Now someone asked me recently, how do you know when you're getting old? Well, I've just turned 50 and my answer to that is in two parts. Part one, there's more hair growing out of your ears than on your head. And part two, is you're losing distance off the tee. Now we all want to keep that distance that we've got. Maybe not increase distance, but as seniors, we don't want to lose distance. But we don't want to develop a golf swing that's going to create injury, put a lot of strain on our back and has a lot of effort. We need a swing that's easy, simple, and repeatable, but also not losing distance. So we're gonna go through three simple keys that are really gonna help you maintain that distance and improve the longevity of your golfing career. We don't wanna shorten it. Now stick around, we've got a bonus drill that's really gonna help you keep that speed up. I'm Glenn Haynes, welcome to Aussie Golf Pros. Step one, we want a stronger grip. We don't want to be fighting that weak fade. We want to be able to turn it over, get a little bit of draw on it, and that means that the grip should be a little bit stronger than it maybe was going back when we were younger because we can't move quite as well. So that means we need a little bit of help to get that draw, to get that distance, and get that little bit of extra roll. It's worth it. Even if we overcook it now and again and draw it too much, it's that extra bit of distance is worth it. So what I mean by a strong grip, we've got to make sure that the top hand is on top. We want the wrist on top of the club. We should be able to see at least two knuckles on that top hand. And the V formed by your thumb and forefinger should be running up to your trail shoulder. If your grip's like this, where the wrist is to the side, you can maybe only see one knuckle and the thumb is on top of the grip, that's what we would call a weak grip. And that means you've got to work really hard to square up the club face. You're going to fight high and weak fades and it's definitely gonna make it tougher for us to get good distance. There are some tour players out there that can play with a weak grip, but this is specifically for you, for senior swings, and a strong grip is definitely gonna help us to get that extra bit of distance. Ooh, bit of a rumble of thunder in the background. Now the bottom hand, same sort of thing. We want that V running up the inside of the shoulder to your trail shoulder there. Get the club in your fingers, in the base of your fingers here with both hands, you don't want it in the palm, that's not very powerful. So make sure that the club is in the fingers. That helps us to get a little bit more action and power with the hands and the wrists. And that's gonna be easy, again, to maintain that distance. We wanna free things up a little bit, a little bit of a waggle. Nice, easy swing. Make sure that those hands and wrists are nice and mobile. Slightly stronger grip. And we get that little bit of draw very easily. We don't have to work so hard for it. So step number one, let's have a slightly stronger grip. Step number two is in your feet. You can get a lot of power from your feet and your footwork is really important to help with that longevity and that injury prevention. Yes, your footwork. So as we get older, we can't turn as well as what we could a few years ago. So that means that we're really trying to get the chest back behind the ball and we're trying to rotate and our body just won't do it. So we've got to help it. So the footwork is how we can help that rotation. Let's allow that lead heel to come off the ground. It's allowed to come off the ground. In fact, I want it to come right up here. This lead knee is gonna come in behind the golf ball and that helps those hips really turn here, get a nice big shoulder turn so the back is to the target and that's going to help us to free things up. And just a reminder here is that there's a lot of evidence out there that suggests that the shorter you swing, the shorter your career. The longer you swing, the longer your career. So we wanna free things up and that's, I'm not just talking about over swinging, but let's get it long and flowing and fluid and it's gonna be a lot easier if we can allow those heels to come around, both heels. So in the back swing, the lead heel's gonna come right up and back and then in the follow through, then we obviously wanna get that trail heel around as well. Let's get some rotation. We can't do it all with our back and chest. We don't have the flexibility. So that means that we can help that rotation with allowing the hips to come around, allowing the heel to come around, and we can wind up a lot more easily that way. All right, so we're not gonna achieve quite the torsion of some of the young big hitters out there, but this is all about longevity and getting the distance that we can achieve. I'm gonna get you to flare the feet out a little bit. Again, that's gonna help you to rotate a little bit more easily. If your feet are dead straight, that's restricting your hips. So a little bit flared with the feet, allow that heel to come out in the backswing. Now, the other benefit here is the first thing you're gonna do in your downswing is put the heel back down on the ground. That's great because that's generating a bit of ground force and it's getting the sequence the way we want it from the ground up instead of trying to 
really generate a lot of force with their arms and shoulders and just swinging from the top here or maybe even coming over the top. So a little bit stronger grip. Let's flare those feet out a little bit and let's get those heels coming off the ground. And it's much easier to rotate that way and a lot safer for your back. The third step is all about your head. We hear too much this advice of keep your head down or keep it still. The head has to move a little bit. Now, if we keep it down and very stable here, then that's gonna restrict our turn, our shoulder's gonna hit our chin, and we're not gonna have the space that we need to swing freely and safely. So the head should be up nice and high so that you can get that shoulder underneath your chin. And if it helps, just let your head turn to the side here, to the trail side, just before you take the club back. Remember Jack Nicholas, turn that head a little bit, and that just frees up that backswing so that you can get a more complete shoulder turn. Obviously lifting that heel as well. And also in the follow through, yes, keep your eyes on the golf ball as you hit it, but we don't wanna keep the head down too long. Again, more strain on the back that way. Allow the head to follow the golf ball. As soon as you make contact with the ball, don't worry about lifting your head, no one does that, that's a myth. Allow your head to come through, follow that golf ball, and that's gonna free up that swing so that you can reduce that chance of injury. So just to go through again, stronger grip. Flare those feet out a little bit so we can get those heels up. A little bit of a waggle, and let's allow that head to rotate a bit. And follow that ball, watch it fly, and enjoy it. These three simple principles apply to mid to long irons, hybrids, fairway woods, and drivers. Now you notice I didn't talk anything about posture, it's because a lot of people trying to attain perfect posture or very straight back actually arch their back too much and just get too stuck and too rigid and that can actually increase the chance of injury. And neither did I speak about dropping the, the trail foot back to try to bring the club on the inside and approach it from the inside. To me, that just restricts rotation and finish through to the target and that can cause back injury as well. I'd much prefer you to be parallel to the target or even slightly open and just use the slightly stronger grip to help you to achieve that draw. Up to three quarters of your club head speed is attributed to your hands and wrists, depending on your physique. So our bonus drill is all about developing speed in that area, improving speed from lag and release through impact. So what I'm gonna get you to do is switch the club around, hold the wrong end, I want you to hold the shaft, not the club head, but we're gonna hold the, the hosel and the shaft there nice and loose and we're going to stick to our three principles so stronger grip lifting and turning and allowing that head to rotate but we're going to do it a lot faster than normal so to start with it's going to sound pretty much like that but i want you to see if you can increase that speed light grip if you hang on too tightly and, and try too hard you're not going to generate speed so nice soft hands and let's hear this we really want to hear some whoosh and push the boat out a little bit. Let's develop some speed. And the majority of that is coming from your hands and wrists. Then do it the opposite way. So switch your hands around. This is gonna be a little bit harder. And for the right-handers, we're gonna do it left-handed. And for the left-handers, right-handed. Doesn't matter how it looks, it feels weird. But we wanna generate that speed and we're activating those muscles and teaching yourself speed. Speed is a habit. So we have to create a new habit of generating speed with the hands and the wrists. A couple of swings and your club might feel a little heavy after that, so just a couple of swings, just freeing things up and getting used to the weight. Let's see if we can hit the shot like that. Of course, there are many different ways you can increase your power output, and some of them are quite complicated that we haven't talked about today. But what you can do and what everyone should be doing is having a good solid warm up before we play to reduce the chance of injury and to improve mobility. Unfortunately, just too many golfers just don't do that. Now, if you're running a little bit late, then if you hop up into this video here, we've got a great three minute warm up routine that's at least gonna get you started for that first tee shot. Thanks so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week. Are you the best golfer you can be?